Let me help you find your color season and your color palette in few simple steps. And consider me as your partner throughout because I am also going to do my own color analysis with you guys. This topic is extensive and a little bit confusing but I've tried to break this down into five simple steps so by the end of this video you should be able to color analyze yourself with ease but in case you have any doubts or questions just feel free to leave a comment under this video and I'll try to answer your questions as much as I can. Let's get started. If you know what color analysis is, you can totally skip this part, but in case you are not aware, let me give you a situation. Let's say you see this bright green cardigan online, it looks beautiful on the model. You fell in love with it, put it in cart, check out, once it arrives, you try it on, look in the mirror, big disappointment. Something is not sitting right with this cardigan on your body, it doesn't suit your complexion, it washes you out. And that's exactly when color analysis comes into play. You analyze yourself, your undertones, your hair color, your eye color, your skin color, pretty much everything, and try to find a family of colors that suits best for you. In short, you're building a color theme for your wardrobe. And my end goal today is to help you find those colors. Before we talk about different steps, you need to understand a few basics, starting with this color season wheel. Now it looks complicated, but let me make it easy for you. Imagine a circle with a horizontal line and a vertical line. This will divide the circle into four different parts, four quadrants, and each of these quadrants represent one season. Winter, spring, summer, and autumn. So you have four main seasons, but then they are divided into three sub-seasons, 3 into 4 is 12, so we have 12 seasons in total. Now it's very important for you to understand how these sub-seasons are formed. For that, you need to know that winter and summer are cool seasons, but spring and autumn are warm seasons. By cool, I mean if you have cool undertones, then you fall in winter or summer, but if you have warm undertones, then you fall under autumn or spring season. Just have some patience because we will talk about how to find your undertones, how to find out whether you're a cool undertone or warm undertone or your neutral undertone. Uh, we will come to that later on. Now the original two lines, horizontal and vertical, that we had dividing the circle into four different parts, we are going to name each end of these two lines. For horizontal line, on the left you have dark, on the right you have light. For vertical line, on the top you have bright and down below you have soft. So it's dark, light, bright and soft. Now that we have all these names, cool, warm, light, dark, bright, soft, figure out, it's very easy to name all these seasons. Let's zoom in on our first quadrant, which is winter. So we'll have three seasons in this winter family. Number one will be bright. On top you have bright uh, and this season is called winter. So you'll have bright winter as the first season. And then on the left you have dark, but the season is still winter, so you'll have bright winter. On the center, it's always called like a true winter because it falls right in the center of this quadrant. You can also name it as cool winter if you want for the ease of understanding, but for every season that lies in the center of any quadrant, we'll call it that true season, like true winter, true summer, true autumn, etc. Let me quickly give you one more example. I think after that you will be able to figure out this whole color season wheel by yourself. Uh, let's zoom in on spring. On the top we have bright, on the right we have light. So uh, the first season will be bright, spring, bright spring. On the center we'll have true spring and uh, on the bottom we'll have the combination of light and spring. So the third season is light spring. It's as simple as that. Like I said, cool and warm represents the cool undertones and warm undertones, but what about dark, light, bright and soft? Let's understand these terms one by one in terms of colors, but also in terms of human characteristics. You see the term bright or clear, that means the original color, original or pure hue, which is saturated. For example, uh, the original color green, blue, red, yellow, and so on. So these are the original colors in their original shade. Nothing is mixed in them. But when you mix white in these colors, they will become light. So if in bright blue you mix white, it becomes light blue. So that's where the term light comes from. And now obviously it's easy to understand which colors are included in light summer, light spring. Those are the light colors. If you take that original blue and mix some black in it, it becomes 
a dark blue. That's where the term dark comes from. And it's included in what seasons? Winter and autumn, I guess. Yes, autumn. So dark autumn, dark winter, they include dark colors. Now you tell me what's the combination of black and white. It's gray. So when you mix gray in this original bright blue color, you get soft or muted blue. That's where the term soft comes from. I think I have a very good example in my wardrobe. If you add black to purple, you will end up with something like this. It's like a dark purple shade. But if you add gray, you will end up with this soft muted mauve shade, uh, which is less saturated. This is more saturated, but dark. This is soft and muted. I'm now going to read a line that I find really interesting in this book called Color Me Beautiful. It says, you can wear almost any color. It's the shade and intensity that count. Spring colors are clear, delicate, or bright with yellow undertones. Autumn colors are stronger with orange and gold undertones. Winter colors are clear, vivid, or icy with blue undertones. So we are talking about same colors. It's just that uh, the intensity and the shade that gets changed. And summer colors are cool and soft with blue undertones. So it's all about finding the right intensity and the shade of these colors. Before we move forward, I'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. BetterHelp is the world's largest online therapy service with over 30,000 experienced and licensed therapists. Starting therapy can be hard and if you're someone like me, having face-to-face -face interactions with your therapist can be uncomfortable and difficult. But with BetterHelp, they ask you whether you want to do your therapy sessions over a phone call, video call, or even via text message. Messaging, whatever is comfortable for you so anyone who is struggling can get help anywhere anytime. I remember using BetterHelp myself back in 2021 when I was really struggling with my mental health. I just didn't know what to do with my life and this was also the same time when I posted my first video on this channel. If you go back to the description box of the first video that I ever posted, uh, you will get the idea what I'm talking about. I have everything written down there. But anyway, coming back to BetterHelp, I remember attending a few sessions over text and I think it gave me the push that I needed. It really helped me to post that first video, come out of my shell and express myself. So if you're struggling, all you need to do is go to this link, which is also provided in the description box down below, fill out a simple questionnaire, then they will assess your specific needs and match you to a therapist, after which you will be able to schedule your therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you. I'd also like to mention by using this link, you also get a 10% discount on your first month of therapy. Now let's understand what dark, light, bright, and soft is in terms of human characteristics. You need to understand a few terms, value, contrast, and chroma. Value means depth. It describes how light or dark the color is. More black is added to a color, it becomes darker. And more white is added to this color, it becomes lighter. This range from light to dark is called value. Now the contrast is the level of difference in value between two or more colors. For example, white and black, they are the two ends of a spectrum. White lies here, black lies here. There's a huge difference between these two colors, so they have high level of contrast. Now when we say a person is light, that means they have light value. They have light hair, light skin, and eyes. This creates a low contrast between the features. All the features are equally light. And the opposite is true when we say a person has a dark value. That means they have prominent dark hair and eyes, which stand in contrast to the lighter skin. They have high level of contrast between their skin and their hair. I'm going to take my example. My eyes are black, my hair, they are black, but my skin is light in shade. I have high contrast between my hair and my skin so I have a dark value. Let's move on to our third definition chroma. It describes how muted or soft a color is. If value and contrast describes how light and dark the characteristics are. Uh, chroma it describes how bright or clear or soft or muted a person is. If you have high chroma, that means you are radiating, you have bright appearance, uh, your hair, your skin, everything is radiating. All these individuals with high chroma, they have less gray features, so they don't have any dullness in their characteristics. A low chroma person has a muted appearance, their hair, skin, eyes, they are all 
desaturated grayish and ashy quality so these low chroma individuals they have a lot of gray pigments and that's why they can wear gray without washing them out and that's what we discussed when we were talking about colors if you add gray then it becomes more soft or muted but if it's on the other end it's bright and now that you are understanding all these definitions i know uh, you will instantly realize if a person is high chroma or a low chroma uh, if a person is bright or not uh, by instantly looking at them and majority of the things that i'm talking about in this video i have taken help from uh, either online resources i did my own research i also also have a book on how to do color analysis I will put all the credits uh, up here on the screen whenever I'm using their images or uh, any sort of video I will also leave all the links in the description box down below because uh, trust me they are very helpful I want you guys to have a pen and a paper ready I want you to write down uh, the results from every step Step one, I want you to go in your wardrobe and pick out the pieces that make you happy. Pick out the colors that you think you look good in. And I think this is going to be controversial. I might get called out for this, but I will stand my ground because I think it's really important to realize which colors make you happy. It's not only about finding your color palette, it's also about uh, what you feel confident and good in. Now, I was reading this book. It is like a gem. And one of the points, it did say that you should not look at your existing wardrobe and the colors that you already have. You should be impartial while doing your color analysis. But I strongly believe that what's the point if after color analyzing yourself, you end up with the colors that don't even make you happy, that you don't feel confident and good in. Forget about other people. Forget about getting compliments. But if you cannot feel that happiness once you look in the mirror then there is no point in doing color analysis and I strongly feel that you should wear colors that make you confident and happy no matter what others think. By the way if you want and research for yourself this book is called Color Me Beautiful by Carol Jackson and it's available on Amazon. Now on your notebook I want you to write down step number one and make a list of all these colors that you picked out from your wardrobe and after that forget about them move on to step number two for me these colors are beige chocolate brown white ivory black gray muted shade of green uh, navy blue purple pink mauve and yellow there are a few easy steps that you can follow to find your undertones number one analyze your veins under natural light just have your wrist exposed like this and analyze if your veins are green blue or mix of both green and blue so if they appear greenish then that means you have warm undertones if they appear blue then you have cool undertones if they are a mix of both then that means you have neutral undertones now i want you to write down step number two finding your undertones and have a bullet point let's call it a uh, and write down your result now if I look at my veins under natural sunlight I know it's a mixture of both blue purple and greenish so I'm going to write down neutral under this point number one we're still on the mission to find our undertones and this is point number B you need to see what your reaction is to the Sun now I think you already know the answer to this but ask yourself uh, whether you tan easily but rarely burn like a sunburn then you have warm undertones but if you're standing in the sun for let's say one hour you don't tan but you burn easily then you have cool undertones for me i tan in like 10 minutes but even if i'm standing in the sun for like one hour i don't burn uh, that means i have warm undertones so write down these results as point number b third point c is uh, to see what your skin looks like against white if it appears yellowish, golden, then that means you have warm undertones. But if you appear pink, blue or red, then that means you have cool undertones. And for this, I don't suggest that you wear something bright like this top underneath, uh, wear something nude or don't wear anything at all. Stand in front of the mirror and put that white cloth against your skin and then analyze yourself. I purchased this pure white piece of clothing just for this experiment. Right now, I have full face of makeup on and this top, obviously. But you will see in the video on the side here that my skin, it does look golden, yellowish. That means I have 
warm undertones. And please, 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 please make sure that you are writing down all these results because it will be helpful in the end. Now let's move on to our point number D, which is analyzing your eyes. If your eyes are gray, green, or blue, that means you have cool undertones. If your eyes are hazel, amber, brown, that means you have warm undertones or even black is also included. So I have warm undertones. Next, I want you to analyze your hair color. If you have black, gray, ashy brown, blonde, then that means you have cool undertones. If you have chestnut, caramel, rich brown, red or yellow, then that means you have warm undertones. Going with this definition, I have cool undertones. So I'm going to write that down. This point was very confusing for me because I was 200% sure that I have warm undertones, but the results are indicating otherwise based on my hair tone. So I went on this website called theconceptwardrobe.com, again, very helpful. And it says hair with warm undertones tends to appear as bright, golden hues, even on darker hair. And this aligns with the characteristics of my hair, which means I have warm undertones, but going by the definition, like the actual color, it says cool undertones. But it also says that ashy indicates cool undertones. So I'm a little bit confused, so I'm going to write down cool slash neutral. A mix of both, maybe. Now we are on to our last point to find our undertones, which is point number F. Uh, this is a metal test. I want you to take silver jewelry and gold jewelry, put it against your skin and see which one looks best. I'm a big fan of gold jewelry. Maybe I am partial, but I do think for my skin type, gold jewelry looks best. Uh, and this says if your answer is gold jewelry, then you have warm undertones. If your answer is silver, then you have cool undertones. If it's both, both look equally good, then you have have neutral undertones. Overall, we discussed six points, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now it's time to tally the results. Here are my results. It says warm, four, cool, zero, neutral, two. That means warm wins. Yay, I have warm undertones. And I totally understand if your results are three warm, three cool, that means you are neutral. Or if you are like five neutral, one cool or one warm, then that's fine. That means you have neutral undertones. But if you're still confused, if the results are all over the place, then that's fine. You can leave a comment uh, under this video or just send me an email. Uh, I will try to help you as much as I can. If your results are clear, whether you have cool undertones or warm undertones, undertones then you are one step closer to your goal why because like i said just remember winter and summer they fall under cool undertones and spring and autumn they fall under warm undertones which means you have already eliminated two seasons so if you're warm you might be autumn or spring if you are cool then you might be a winter or a summer it's just a matter of finding which one if you have clear-cut results that you are warm undertone, you can skip this step and move on to step number four. If you have clear-cut results and it says cool undertones, again, you can skip this step and move on to step number four. But step number three, I want you to note this down on your notepad, is to find what your contrast is, whether you're high contrast or low contrast. And we already discussed the definition of contrast. In this case, we need to find out whether you have a high difference between your hair and your skin, or you have a low contrast between your skin and your hair. Even though my results from step one, uh, they did say that I have warm undertones. Just to be a good partner in this uh, color analysis journey, I will write in step three that I have high contrast. Please write it down. When I was doing all the research, writing down everything in paper, I didn't realize that this video, like the first few steps, will be so long. I really apologize that I have to cut this video short. And I think it's better this way because in part one, you can really understand the basics and the foundation of color analysis. And then in part two, you can do the actual color analysis. I think it does make sense, but let me know in the comment section if you have any complaints. I promise there won't be much of a gap between part one and part two. And I really apologize again. <laughs> here please please i really hope with part one you understand what different color seasons are how this color season wheel is formed and some basic definitions like soft muted saturated bright clear dark and so on if you find this video helpful please don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys in part two